What's up, everybody? It's your favorite master of the Knights of Ren's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at SH Figuarts Kylo Ren and First Order Stormtrooper. And just as a heads up for those that kind of watch the non-Transformer stuff for the skits, uh, there's going to be no skit today. Instead, I am going to have a portion um, at the end of the video explaining who I think Ray is and why. So that's what we're going to do in lieu of a skit. But let's get into these fellas. So this is the First Order Trooper, and I'm just going to come right out and say it. Uh, I think that this figure is absolutely perfect. Uh, I rarely give a figure that sort of credit, um, but I'm giving it to this guy. I think he's perfect. Uh, Accessory-wise, he comes with that blaster, which we'll talk about in, in a minute. He comes with um, two different holding hands, uh, both for right and left. And I think that these are uh, their, trigger, their trigger hands as well. And he comes with a left trigger hand, which I just dropped. And he comes with a left fist. So two fists and then four different types of, of gun holding hands. They're all the same. They're white plastic with the black applied on. Uh, the armor and the seams within are all sculpted in there. So uh, no need for concern there. Now let's talk about this guy. Uh, well, well, we'll do the gun. So, the gun has this hinge for, for the, you know, I don't know if they ever used this to hold, but whatever. It's there. Um, white plastic, black is... Mm, mm, I think it's black plastic with the white painted on. That's what it's looking like to me. Silver's painted on as well. All the sculpting and stuff is spot on. Good little... Good little unit. Um, I guess if I had to pick a complaint, I think that this is supposed to, you know, like they, they carry these on the sides of their hips, and I don't see a way uh, to do that. So if I had to have a complaint, that would be it. Um, now, let's talk about the figure. Head is on a ball peg into the head. The head sculpt itself is spot on. Picture perfect. Um, the black is painted on and clean as a whistle. And the silver is painted on as well. All like the, the great type stuff inside the mouth part, like the black mouth part, that's all sculpted as well. Um, the, the neck is also on a ball peg, so articulation is good to go. Down, up, side to side, swivels, everything's where you want it. Uh, chest, double ball peg it feels like. Uh, no, it's a hinge. It's a hinge front and back and then a ball peg at the bottom. No, maybe not. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it works. And then you get the swivel as well. So great range of motion. Um, you got to watch as these two pieces um, just to make sure that one co coincides with the other, but that's the only issue there. And it's not really an issue, it's, it's to make sure that the sculpt looks good. So, just pointing it out. Black paint on there looks good, and on there, and on the back all looks clean. The white gloss is perfect. Same for the uh, lower abdomen, which is also on a, ball, on a ball peg. So, I mean, it's crazy. A little teapot. Same on the other side. If you go to an extreme angle, you lose, you have this gap in there, but you got to go pretty extreme to get it. Uh, arms. Same sort of system we've seen before, um, where it's like a ball peg inside, um, and then it comes out to a hinge. This piece here is on a hinge that also plugs in into a ball peg so that you can get the shoulder piece out of the way in order to articulate the shoulder and then lay it back down as need be. All works really well and allows for a bit of a butterfly. No complaints. Uh, bicep swivel right at the uh, armor cut, which is good. Double jointed elbow, getting you that far, muscle man. And then wrist swivel and hinge, and then you swivel at the hand to either go out and in or up and down. 
Um, black is painted on the white, looks good. Same for the other side. All the sculpting in the torso looks good as well. Black is all painted clean. Even that little white circle there. Really, really sharp figure. Okay, so the belt is attached to the pelvis, and all of these little pouches are on little hinges so that you can articulate them and have them not get in the way. And how great is that? Money. So good. And they're all painted well. All the white's painted on the black very well. White's painted on the uh, the black at the pelvis as well. That looks good. Uh, articulation wash for the hips. They're like a uh, universal joint. So you get the swivel up to there, back to there, hinge out to the side, to there. Move the pouches. And then double joint and knee. Getting you back to there, both sides. And then uh, no, no paint. But I think that's accurate. Little paint down there. Like that little touch of paint. They didn't have to do that. But they did. Ankle tilt. Rocker. Intact. Toe hinge. Black paint on the uh, on the base of the shoe. Uh, if you are a Star Wars fan, do not let this guy pass you by. He is picture perfect. Next up is the old Kylo Ren. Um, accessory wise, he comes with a bit more, comes with a slew of hands. Um, so we have this force hand, this force hand for the opposite side. All of them are the same. The, uh, the black and the cuff is more of a matte and then the hand is more of a gloss the, and all the sculpting, uh, lines and so forth. So they're all done in the same, just different poses. Uh, a, a, a right, almost maybe, it's almost like a trigger hand, but... You know, maybe a force hand, also interrogation, maybe. Um, left fist, right fist, uh, a, a lightsaber holding hand for his left side, and uh, the same type of trigger hand for his right side. Now, he also comes with, and I find this to be a bit bizarre, he comes with this lightsaber that he's holding that we'll go over in a minute, and then he comes with two hilts. Um, at least mine did. Oh, I know why. Okay, so one is for holding. If you just wanted to be holding the hilt, uh, let's get this out of the way so we can focus. So you, if you just wanted to be holding the hilt, the red is painted on there sharp as a tack. That's really tight paint. Silver is painted on there. It's washed with the black. It looks really good. And then this one is to plug in to the belt so that if you have him holding this one, you don't have to deal with that little notch. How clever. And this one plugs in to this little port there. Like that. Now I will tell you, um, this is on the wrong side. Um, his, his, uh, his, his, his lightsaber in the movie hangs, actually, it hangs right about back here. Um, but, whatever. Maybe... Something was lost in translation there. Uh, all right, so we got that. We also have this hood. Um, he comes wearing it. I'm not sure if you're supposed to take it off, but I did um, because I like this look a lot better. Uh, I think that this uh, it ends up looking like a, a little too big. I guess I'll have to show you, which I really don't want to do. Oh, get a phone call. Hold on one second. Sorry, that was my aunt. I just haven't heard from her in some time, so I had to take that. So I put, while I was talking to her, I put this back on. Um, and it looks fine. It looks the part. It's just not my, my favorite way to see the, uh, this character. Um, so if you... Hmm, well, that ain't good. I'll fix that here in a minute. That's just a ball peg. Take that off. And then you got to work his head out of here, which is uh, less easy. But if you push from the back and from the bottom, so to speak, um, that's how I have had the most luck. Uh, you can see that that hinge down in there now. It hooks onto this ball peg. There you go. And then, 
<sighs> we'll get this sorted. The things I do for you guys. Oh, you can see this now. So that, that, when I say the double ball peg uh, system, you see the ball joint down into the pelvis, and it comes up to a smaller one up here in the uh, torso. So. There. All right. So the shoulders, butterfly joint, a well-done butterfly joint here to get that arm all the way across there. Ball peg into the shoulder coming out to a ball hinge. Um, so the articulation in the shoulder is pretty much perfect. All the, the wrinkles and stuff are sculpted. It's a flatter, uh, matter type black against this, this more glossier black, which looks really good. Uh, bicep swivel at the shoulder joint. Double jointed elbow getting you pretty much anything you could want. Comes down to the uh, the swivel down here and the hinge. Um, and I'm pretty sure that this hand, sw yeah, it swivels at both ends in order to get in and out and up and down, depending on how you want it. Um, same for the other side. Uh, the lightsaber is like textured to give it that more, you know, that edgy look that he kind of has. Uh, translucent red. I still think the way to do this is a white plastic up the center and then the translucent red around it. Uh, maybe one day someone will listen to me. We've already taken a look at the uh, torso joint. Um, but it works like a champ. And then this soft floating belt piece over top. Uh, for the lower part of the body, we have these flaps. Um, you have four of those. And then underneath them, you have an additional four flaps of a softer plastic. Uh, all of them have the texture molded into them, which is nice. Uh, the hips are on the same kind of drop-down double ball peg system that we've seen before. Um, so you can get the up and down in order to get the leg out to there back to there, out to the side, no problem. Single hinge knee, which I found interesting, but it works like a champ. Really well done. And then the boot is all sculpted, all the uh, buckles and stuff are painted, and then the foot has the uh, has a tilt, and then uh, a rocker, and then a toe hinge as well. Um, and, and, that's, and that's this fella. And uh, also I should say that the head I'm not sure if we talked about it, but it's on a ball joint that goes down into that, that, that base joint that we looked at. So that, that's all good to go. All that stuff, even inside the center of the mask, is textured. All the silver is painted well, and all the dents and stuff in the helmet are all pretty screen accurate. I really, 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 really enjoy this figure. So there they are with their Hasbro counterparts. Um, and uh, the first Road Trooper blows this guy out of the water blows them out of the water and the Kylo one is definitely superior to that one but this is a, a well-made figure as well but yeah I definitely recommend those two and there's Kylo Ren with the Mafex Vader and the SH Figuarts Maul um, so it's a pretty good scale I think like I think that that works pretty well I love that pose by the way you have hard to the Rebel Alliance and the Traitor. Final thoughts wise, uh, get these guys. Get them right now. They're great. They're both great. The, the First Order Trooper is perfect. Um, with the exception of not being able to clip his gun on to his, to his thigh. That is it. Other than that, he is perfect. The Wren is really good. There's a couple of, of things that, that irritate me. Um, the, the easiness to get his hood on and off irritates me. And then, because mainly because I don't think that you're supposed to. So they didn't engineer it in a way to make it, it it's simple to do. And then uh, the only other thing that irritates me about the Wren is that there's some joint inconsistencies. Some joints are a little tighter than others. Uh, some are a little looser than others. And then some are your standard smooth SH Figuarts joint. This guy is smooth all the way around. But if you're a Kylo Ren fan, get them. If you're a Force Awakens fan, get them. If you're a Star Wars fan, get them. If you're an SH Figuarts fan, get them. Get these figures. They're both great. I can't recommend them enough. Let's hear my Ray theory and then we'll get out of here. Just a warning before we get into this, massive Force Awakens spoilers, so if you haven't seen it and you're trying to avoid it, avoid this video. Good morning, friends. I'm going to tell you who I think Ray is. Now, I'm open to hearing your opinions, but I've probably already thought about your opinion and am well aware of it. I know the other opinions out there. She may have been a reincarnate Anakin. She may be also born a midichlorian. She may be Obi-Wan's granddaughter. She may be Luke's daughter. She may be Luke's daughter and Obi-Wan's granddaughter. Uh, she may be a Jedi student's daughter. She, you know, there's all sorts of theories. I'm well aware of them. Um, and that's, that's, they're fine. The, the one thing about this that we know is that we don't know. 
So, if you're going to disagree with me, I welcome it. Be sure to state what you think. Um, and I'm open to hear it. But just know, you don't know. And neither do I. But if you don't know, when you don't know, I don't have the time for you. So, now that we're past the negativity, let's continue to some positive things. I personally think that Rey is the daughter of Han and Leia. I don't think that Han knows it throughout the whole movie. I'm not sure that Leia knows it. But what I do think is that in the flashback scene, and this I know, there's a scene with her on the ground. Now, we don't know if she's seeing through her eyes or perhaps through another person's eyes. I'm well aware of that. But there's a scene with her on the ground of the Jedi Massacre scene. And she's looking up. And when she looks up, she sees a guy who is credited in the movie as Master of Ren or Knight of Ren or something. And he's holding like this weapon back. He has like a Raiden type hat on. And he catches a lightsaber blade through the chest that's Kylo's. I think that we're going to find that that is the deed that put Kylo in the position that he's in as Master of the Knights of Ren. And I think we're going to find that he killed that guy. There's a skateboarder? It's raining outside. Kids today. That he killed that guy to protect her. He couldn't bring himself to kill her. And he's the one that hit her. I don't think Luke hit her. I don't think Han hit her. I don't think that any of our heroes from the original trilogy would have hid their kid. I don't think that Luke would have hit if it was his kid. I don't think that Luke would have hit her just to go hide on another planet. I don't think that makes sense. I don't think that Han would have hit her because Han is a braggart enough to kind of think that he could handle it on his own. I don't think Leia would have hit her because Leia's the type where she would think that the safest place in the world is right next to her. I think Kylo hid her because he wanted to maybe protect her, also hide his failure at being able to kill family, which he later redeems himself for in the eyes of Snoke being able to kill Han. I think that it's not a coincidence that her and the Falcon are on the same planet. I think that uh, it, isn't, it is far from a coincidence. I don't think that Han and Leia talk about her, you know, in all these other scenes where they don't talk about another kid, because they probably assume that they lost her at the Jedi school, and you no one wants to talk about their dead kid. But that is my theory on it. I, I, I've watched it now five times. Uh, that doesn't mean that my theory is any more valid or less valid. I'm just saying that I've, I've, I've looked at this thing a few times now. Um, I personally think that she's Han and Leia's. However, I'm almost absolutely sure in my heart of hearts, you know, we don't know anything. I almost feel absolutely sure that it's Kylo that dropped her off. Because that's one of the few things that makes sense to me. Um, but time will tell, and uh, we only have about a year and a half left to go. So that's my theory. Feel free to leave yours. I'm sure I've heard it before, unless you have a brand new theory. If you don't think she's a student of... I'll tell you one more thing she could be. They could tie her back to Rebel somehow. I could see them wanting to do that. Um, but if you don't think that she's tied to Kenobi, Luke, Han, Leia another student at the Jedi School, someone from Rebels or someone from Clone Wars, feel free to let me know. You can let me know what you think regardless. Just don't think that you know, because you don't know. And neither do I. It's just what I think. I only say that because I've, I've run into these guys on the internet recently that are just like, no, it's obviously such and such. No, it's not. It's, it's not obvious that it's anybody's, which is why this conversation is so fun. But I'm definitely interested in your opinion. Other than that, um, I'll see you soon. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.